Hi, my name is Shreya B. Sam. And I'm Avi B. Sam, and together we created a linked neurofuzzy infant system for schizophrenia diagnosis. Schizophrenia is one of the most dangerous mental illnesses in the entire mental illness spectrum and comprises a shockingly large amount of the population despite a general lack of understanding on the causes and results of the disease. Schizophrenia ranks among the top 10 causes of disability around the world, and those with the condition have a 50 times higher risk of attempting suicide than the general population. 1.5 million more are documented each year, and schizophrenics take up one out of three psychiatric hospital beds around the world. However, these statistics don't even provide an accurate and wholesome view of everyone currently living with the illness, since there are many, many more that go undiagnosed and even misdiagnosed that are suffering due to it. Every patient has a different clinical display of schizophrenia, and oftentimes it's easy to characterize those symptoms as other illnesses. Usually, schizophrenics are initially misdiagnosed with a more concrete and easily defined disease like ADHD or dementia due to the lack of awareness surrounding schizophrenia. However, the diagnosis of schizophrenia is crucial towards providing effective treatment. A study from Yale University stated that detecting schizophrenia rapidly greatly improves the patient's responses to treatment. The overall cost of schizophrenia treatment in the United States in 2002 was $62.7 billion, an amount which is no doubt much, much larger today, making schizophrenia also one of the most costly mental illnesses. The cost of treatment could be greatly reduced by an improved detection system, since the longer the period of time before treatment, the worse off the patient's responses are and the more effort is required for recovery. Overall, the diagnosis of schizophrenia is overlooked by the medical community, which causes less than optimal tools to be used. Most past solutions are on opposite sides of the spectrum, either leaning entirely towards the qualitative or the quantitative. Obviously, both sides have their respective advantages and disadvantages. Qualitative analysis, for example, like the PANSS test utilized in our program, mainly requires the diagnostician to observe the patient and arrive at a conclusion by analyzing the patient's responses, and requires a level of subjectivity and therefore a level of uncertainty in diagnosis. Quantitative analyses, on the other hand, are relatively new, and although their accuracy rates are increasing over time, they still completely ignore how the symptoms are displayed in the patient. Overall, both methods do not have accuracy rates high enough to warrant complete trust in their respective tools. So what we attempted to do was create a bridge between the subjective and the objective and take the same mindset utilized for the diagnosis of more concrete illnesses like cancer and diabetes and apply it to schizophrenia. In order to do so, we took the two most established methods from both the qualitative and quantitative fields, which were the PNSS test and the MRI test, respectively. The PANSS, or the Positive and Negative Syndrome Scale, is the most commonly used psychiatric assessment and rating system for schizophrenia. Essentially, the psychiatrist does an initial rating of the patient on a scale of 0 to 6 for the symptoms, which is raw data that they must then further analyze to come up with a concrete diagnosis. What we aim to do then is to take the raw PANSS data and do the analysis for them, eliminating the need for a time-consuming and detailed examination from a psychiatrist. The most recent and effective method for clustering raw PNSS data for further analysis is the pentagonal model. So we clustered our data along the five factors, which are positive, negative, excited, disorganized, and depressed. The MRIs of schizophrenic patients display striking differences to ordinary MRIs. Schizophrenia is characterized by an overall decrease in brain matter, especially gray matter, and an overall increase in cerebrospinal fluid. Gray matter decrease occurs at a rate of 4% to 10% per year, making it the prime factor for observation. Overall, the respective volumes of the brain matter were utilized as a key aspect in our final diagnosis. Fuzzy logic was the cornerstone of our diagnostic tool, because unlike Boolean logic, fuzzy logic operates with an infinite number of membership values between zero and one, essentially thriving in the gray areas like mental illnesses. Fuzzy logic uses a special type of function called a membership function, and the specific type of membership function utilized in our program was triangular, or TriMF for short. The way a fuzzy system works is the inputs, which are crisp or numerical, are fuzzified as values onto TriMFs. All the TriMFs in the system are then channeled through a rule base ca um, characterized by if-then statements, the output of which is then placed on an output TriMF and then defuzzified to denote an overall likelihood. So since this project was done without the aid of a mentor, we utilized a public database to collect our raw PANSS and MRI data called SkizConnect, which compiles databases from universities all around the nation into one site. So the workflow of our project is relatively straightforward, and all the steps lead in the culmination of our final diagnostic tool. So first, we decided to focus on the qualitative aspect of our project, which in our case is the PANSS data. 
So as stated earlier, we clustered our raw PNSS data along the five pentagonal factors. Then the minimum, maximum, mean, and standard deviation of each of the factors were calculated, and this would form the basis of our triangular membership functions. The PANSS fuzzy system had five inputs which corresponded with the five pentagonal factors, and each input had three triangular membership functions, low, medium, and high. The output had six triangular membership functions due to the larger number of inputs in the system, which were very low, low, moderate, likely, very likely, and extremely likely. To create the domains for the output triangular membership function, a system of weighted based on importance was created with the highest weight given to the excited factor, followed by positive, then negative, disorganized, and lastly depressed. The system of weightages was made based on extensive research done concerning the characteristic symptoms of schizophrenia and the factors that those symptoms fell under. Then a list of all the possible output combinations were created to create the rules of our system. Then we moved on to the quantitative aspect of our project, which in our case is the MRIs. MRIs are usually found in a standard DICOM format with around 160 slices of the brain per person. So in order to analyze the MRIs, we converted them from the DICOM format into one 3D nifty image per patient. And then the brain volumes of each were calculated because we segmented the brain images using the SPM8 tool into cerebrospinal fluid, gray matter, and white matter. Then the minimum, maximum, mean, and standard deviation were once again found to form the basis of our triangular membership functions. So the neuroimaging fuzzy system had three inputs which corresponded with the three segments, and each input had three triangular membership functions. The output also had only three triangular membership functions due to the smaller number of inputs for the system. To create the domains for these output triangular membership functions, a similar system of weightage based on importance was created, with the highest weight given to an increase in cerebrospinal fluid volume, followed by a decrease in grain matter volume, and lastly, a decrease in white matter volume. Then a list of all the possible output combinations were once again created to formulate the rules for our system. Lastly, we combined both of those fuzzy systems to create our final linked fuzzy expert system. To do so, both the outputs from the PANSS and the MRI fuzzy systems were added as the inputs to a new system, and the final output had six triangular membership functions to allow for an accurate diagnosis, which were very low, low, moderate, likely, very likely, and extremely likely. We then decided to test our link fuzzy expert system using a testing set that we had put aside. Essentially, we inputted the testing set into the system and checked for appropriate responses. So our linked fuzzy expert system had an overall accuracy rate of 90.57%, which is high in terms of schizophrenic diagnostic tools. However, we felt as though we could improve that diagnostic rate by creating an ANFIS system. An adaptive neurofuzzy inference system, or ANFIS for short, unlike simple fuzzy logic, essentially creates its own fuzzy system by analyzing a set of training data and uses neural optimization techniques to train and optimize the function. The specific type of ANVIS model utilized in our program had three hidden layers. After the inputs were analyzed, the operator T-norm was applied and the antecedents of the rules were calculated, followed by the second hidden layer where the rule strengths were normalized and the final hidden layer where the consequence of the rules were determined. The final output layer essentially calculated the global output as a summation of all the signals prior to that layer. The optimization technique chosen for our program was hybrid optimization, which utilized a combination of backpropagation and least mean squares method. Backpropagation was used to generate the deltas of the program and modify the program's parameters, while least mean squares method was incredibly useful in eliminating the outliers present in the data amassed from SkizConnect. The outputs were presented in a similar manner to that of the linked fuzzy system, with the PNSS data and the MRI data being inputted to Dino and overall likelihood. The testing data was split up into multiple sets in order to further ensure that the program was not overfit to the training data. And the error rates and accuracy rates were averaged to denote an overall error rate of approximately 1.9% and an average accuracy rate of approximately 98.1%. Therefore, the ANFIS system was able to accurately diagnose schizophrenia in patients, which proved our hypothesis true. There were many aspects that contributed to the high accuracy rate of our system. Primarily, fuzzy logic was instrumental to the creation of our tool. Also, the SPM8 tool was incredibly precise in its segmentation of the brain images, which helped during the creation of our MRI fuzzy system. The high accuracy rate of 98.1% was a result of the decision to implement the ANVIS model, which upgraded the symbol fuzzy system by adding neural characteristics such as fault tolerance, generalization, and neural learning. It also automated the rulemaking and membership function creation process, essentially taking the best of both worlds from both neural networks and fuzzy logic. 
Today, we are at a peak of innovation in medicine, with arsenals of tools and software at the fingertips of every doctor and surgeon. Especially in the United States, data analysis, diagnosis, and treatment are at a zenith in efficiency. However, mental illness diagnosis and treatment have been left out of the growth curve associated with almost all other diseases, mainly as a result of the social stigma surrounding mental illnesses. Recent American studies have shown that approximately one half of those with severe mental illnesses have not received treatment in the past 12 months, the majority of whom were unaware of their illness due to stigma and distrust over psychiatry's reputation. Even those who acknowledge their illness did not receive treatment due to underestimating the effects of their disease. Therefore, this linked analysis provides the first step for the legitimization of mental illnesses, as it eliminates much of the uncertainty and ambiguity associated with diagnosis. It also takes advantage of information readily available for any potentially schizophrenic patient, an initial psychiatric reading, and an MRI, without requiring any further effort. Therefore, this tool can be implemented in the workforce to aid psychiatrists, and this idea of a linked analysis can be implemented for multiple other mental illnesses to help display how mental illnesses can be diagnosed in a similar manner to all other diseases, with some parts subjective and some parts objective in diagnosis. This tool um, can be used to help psychiatrists. Schizophrenia is the perfect first step for mental illness diagnosis as it is a highly treatable disease, with one out of four of those diagnosed being able to recover within 10 years, and another one out of four being able to lead completely independent lives after treatment. It has the highest rate of recovery when compared to almost all other chronic mental illnesses. Through the data previously stated, it is clear that if patients are provided with an accurate diagnosis and a clear means of treatment, many will be able to return to an ordinary standard of living. Therefore, we hope that it is self-evident that through the usage and implementation of a linked diagnostic tool for schizophrenia, we can make the world a happier and healthier place. We would like to thank um, George Washington University, Discovery, uh, Discovery Education, and um, the Siemens Competition provi for providing us with this wonderful opportunity. Thank you.